Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Vitopia University's weekly discussions. My name is Amin Rafi and on today's episode I'm going to show you how simple it is to accept cryptocurrencies as a form of payment on your online store or physical store. So whether you have a restaurant, a bar or any sort of place where people come in and pay for things, uh, you can accept cryptocurrencies very, very easily. And if you have an online store, whether it's Shopify, whether it's Magento, WordPress, etc., uh, it's as simple as downloading a plugin and uh, people will be able to pay for your items uh, with cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. It's very exciting, it's very simple. And uh, while I've traveled to various locations around the world, uh, I've come across a lot of individuals who own a cafe, a restaurant, a bar, etc. Uh, they have an interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and uh, they want to accept it as a form of payment because you know, it introduces a new crowd just because you do that. And in a lot of cases, they think it's a complicated process and I would have to assume this is due to their interaction with the financial uh, service providers or banking systems where uh, you would have to pay a great deal of fees. Uh, you have to pay perhaps for the point of sale systems or the hardware and uh, some other things that are involved in that process. Though I can tell you right now that with cryptocurrencies, uh, it's as simple as downloading an app on your phone or downloading a plugin for your uh, online website. And it's, it's quite simple. So on today's episode, I'm gonna go over some of these things and give you some tips on uh, what to look out for, what's important and uh, the limitations. And uh, also how you can go about paying for your bills or uh, pay your rent using cryptocurrencies because at the end of the day even though you may have an interest um, you still have a business to run you still have to live your life and you still need to pay your bills so it's all well and good to accept cryptocurrencies though if people don't show you how you can go about you know taking that cryptocurrency and then uh, paying for your bills it's not very practical for most people so there you have it and uh, let's begin uh, so our website, as always, is bitopia.org. Uh, there you can subscribe to our newsletter and keep updated with our progress. We have added our Instagram channel there as well. So if you would like to follow us, please do so. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, via the subscription button. The first platform that I want to get into is coin payments. Uh, they have been around since 2013. They're quite popular and uh, a lot of different online stores use that plugin. As mentioned, uh, they support various platforms. So whether you have a Shopify online store, WordPress, etc., and uh, you can go into greater detail as to the platforms that they support via the bottom there. You can choose which cryptocurrencies to accept. Uh, so if I was to set this up for a store owner, I would traditionally start with just Bitcoin and Litecoin, just to keep it simple. You don't want to overwhelm people and give them too many choices. And then if you have an audience from a specific, uh, let's say digital currency, and you wanna to cater to them, you can always do that. And once you go into your platform, you can add it like any other plugin. So let's say you want to allow your customers to pay with PayPal, you would download a PayPal plugin, uh, which would allow them to make that payment. So it's not that complicated, it's actually as simple as accepting PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. And what happens is that the customer goes through your online store as normal, nothing really changes. Just when they are about to make their payment um, in the checkout process, instead of selecting Visa or MasterCard, they would just select cryptocurrencies, which would bring about a website uh, following that where they would make the payment. So to just show you an example, Tidesbezorgd is a website within the Netherlands. Uh, it's similar to takeaway.com. It's for food delivery. And, you know, they've been accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment for a very long time. And I can't express how many times I've been saved by this website, especially back in 2014, when it was very hard to spend your cryptocurrencies. I always uh, really enjoyed using their website to make payments. Um, because yeah, I've, I've, it's, it's the currency that I've been living on. So as mentioned, 
instead of just selecting Visa or MasterCard, they have an option for Bitcoin, which is great. Some stores even give you a discount, um, which makes sense because they don't have to pay that fee to the uh, payment gateway. So a lot of times the banks or you know these newer banks, uh, they may offer a service for the stores to accept payments with Visa or MasterCard, uh, though there's a fee involved. Uh, I know in Mexico, for example, it's four to five percent. In Australia, it's about one or two, up to 5%, depending on the service provider, really. Though with Bitcoin, you get your payment, you move on. Um, and because of that, some stores offer you a discount. So coin payments uh, seems to charge 0.5%. Uh, that's for all coins. And then you can go about comparing you know, different platforms in terms of their fee. One tip that I would give you is that you don't want to use a platform that would hold the cryptocurrencies hostage. Uh, this is a term that I like to uh, use. It pretty much means that once the payment is made, you don't want some restriction like uh, we need $50 worth of payments before we can let you, uh, you know, take that out and use it as you like. Uh, these restrictions are not representative of, of what cryptocurrencies and decentralizations uh, are or about. Uh, therefore, it's better to uh, kind of do your homework a little bit, ask some questions uh, as to how the fees work and what limitations are there. And keep in mind also, most of these platforms don't require your personal details, they don't require you know, your driver's license and things like this, because they're simply just allowing you to have a wallet where payments go to. Now, if you have a store or your online store, you're already established, this may not be important to you, though I'm just... Uh, I guess describing uh, the format on how things work. And uh, if you do have those online stores, these things don't bother you, uh, you have a lot of options to choose from. That's one of them. Another one is CoinGate, and I think they're doing a good job as well. I haven't used CoinGate myself, though from the uh, quick scan of their website, they've done a great job, their interface looks good. And again, you can go into it and see what restrictions there are, what the fees are, and uh, whether it's suitable for you. And these are things that we will explore at a greater length uh, during our course. So, you know, we can discuss these platforms, what's important, what's not, and uh, go about it that way. And if you're a store owner, whether it's physical or online, uh, you can reach out and we can guide you through these things, depending on where you are. Um, so that's two quick examples. You can already see it being used in uh, Tizer's Orc, for example. And there's a lot of online merchants that I showed in the last video that accept cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. So there you go. Now, if you don't have an online store and uh, you have a physical store, um, as mentioned, a lot of people think it's a trivial task to accept cryptocurrencies, though it's just as easy as downloading a app on your phone. So if you have your phone on you while you're in the store and you're the store owner, you can allow people to pay with cryptocurrencies. And if you're not there all the time, you can just designate a phone uh, for your store. So in Berlin, uh, I have seen, for example, a cafe where you can pay with cryptocurrencies. So they just have one phone that sits there and uh, the staff uh, have been instructed on how they can allow people to uh, pay with cryptocurrencies. An example of such an app would be Coinomy. Coinomy is great, uh, especially for beginners, because you know instead of in, having an app for Bitcoin, another app for Ethereum, etc., uh, they offer you the ability to have all of them in the same app in a very simple way. Obviously, you need to protect your private key in the case that you lose your phone. Um, they're good with security and it's widely used and uh, due to the ability to have all these different cryptocurrencies within the same app, it means that someone could come in and they want to pay with something else. And if you're open to it, um, you can obviously go ahead and do that. If you just want to accept Bitcoin itself, I personally uh, use Samurai or Wasabi uh, or other people use Wasabi as well. And I covered that in another video. And the reason those wallets stand out is due to uh, the level of security they provide you and the level of privacy. Uh, so they're much a bit more advanced and maybe a bit more trivial for the beginners. 
Uh, so Koinami is a great place to start. You know, I've been to many locations and, uh, you know, I, I, sometimes as store owner, I've been to, for example, Convivio, which is a co-working space within Oaxaca in Mexico. And I had a chat with the owner of it and he was open to it. So I downloaded Coinomi on his tablet and that was it. Uh, I could pay for drinks, I could pay for my monthly membership. And uh, I could also tell other people that this is a place where they can come and pay for things using cryptocurrencies. So it's quite exciting in that way where you can let other people know too and you're opening up your doors to a new uh, group of people that may otherwise not come through. What's interesting about these uh, platforms that I mentioned is that, you know, you may think, well, I do want to accept cryptocurrency, but I would like to still receive fiat. You know, let's say you live in Europe and you still want to receive, at the end of the day, the payments in Europe. You know, yeah, I want to let people pay with Bitcoin, but can I just get my uh, euros in my bank account and not worry about cryptocurrencies and how it all works, etc.? Sure. That is absolutely fine. So some platforms, uh, for example, uh, CoinGate, and then there's BitPay, and there's uh, other things uh, that are available. And obviously, we're open to discussing these things further. Uh, allow you to select a percentage. So you can go as far as 100%. So I pay with Bitcoin, you get your cryptocurrency. Uh, sorry, I pay with Bitcoin, you get your uh, euros in your bank account. Or you could select 50%. So I pay with Bitcoin, 50% comes to you in form of Bitcoin, 50% comes in the form of Euros. So you do have that uh, flexibility in how you divide uh, the payments and how you receive them. Okay, so that's an example from a physical store and a online store and uh, how you can set certain variables and what to look out for. Something else that's very interesting that I personally really enjoyed coming across uh, recently is that what if I want to accept, what if I want the reverse? What if I want people to pay with debit card, credit cards, or PayPal, etc., and I just want to receive cryptocurrency? What if my organization, let's say you have a DAO, what if it's Topia, which is a decentralized autonomous university, and uh, we want to function and operate purely with cryptocurrencies. Now, this was a trivial thing uh, not long ago, though I'm very, very excited and happy that there is an organization like MoonPay, uh, which really makes it simple for you to allow people to pay whatever it is that they want to pay. So, you know, they debit cards or credit cards or bank transfers. And at the end of the day, you get your cryptocurrency. So I've been in touch with them. I would like to implement them for uh, the use uh, within Bitopia itself, because at the end of the day, it's a university and people should be able to pay however they like. So if they want to pay with cryptocurrencies, that's fine. If they want to pay with debit cards and credit cards, that's also fine. Um, so we have these tools available to us to create a hybrid system where individuals can select uh, either path. And at the end of the day, we deal with our internal needs however we like to. So you don't enforce that on your end user. And I think that's a good way to do things. So as a system design perspective or as a framework design perspective, um, these are some tips on how you can build organizations, how you can accept payments and the versatility that is offered to you by having a hybrid model. And uh, if you have an organization and you want to uh, kind of replicate this model, or you want to learn more about it, obviously reach out to us. And uh, you can do so via info at bitopia.org or our Telegram channel there or campus.bitopia.org, which is our uh, campus website where you can discuss uh, various ideas, etc., and you'll be able to connect with our students and teachers. So, when we're dealing with payments, um, you know, we've just kind of covered the topics of how to do it in cryptocurrencies, uh, fiat, versatility, etc. And that's all well and good. And uh, though some people may need something greater, some people may need a point of sale system. Uh, so 
to give you an overview of what that means is that let's say you don't want the phone app. Let's say that's trivial for your staff to kind of use every time you know, and you may need to get an extra phone to do so. Or if you have a tablet, you could use that as well. The, what I want to show you next is a payment a gateway, which is hardware based. Um, so this is the next level. This is from Paolini Police in uh, Czech Republic and uh, the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. Uh, I think it's the only place I have seen personally in the world that only accepts cryptocurrencies. So if you go in there and you buy a cup of coffee, they have a Bitcoin ATM at the door where you can exchange your uh, fiat currency to cryptocurrencies and then pay for your coffee. Um, they have a Red Bull machine that accepts uh, cryptocurrency. They even had an arcade machine that accepts cryptocurrency. So I haven't really seen this anywhere else in the world. I think it's a very, very good example on how entire organization can uh, function on cryptocurrencies alone. And a point of sale system is similar to this. And uh, you know, you would have your items there as you would anything else. Uh, this person always has an NFC chip implanted within their hand um, and they pay for what they need to do. They can also use the device to check their balance. So um, I have been to their location many, many times over the years and I love that. I love, it's, it's, it's just, it feels very, um, it feels like home because you go there and uh, it's all functioning on cryptocurrencies and you know, you purchase food, coffee or whatever it is and they're really open to showing you how to do it. And uh, I think it's a great example to perhaps inspire others to do something similar. Again, the hybrid model is great. Um, this model is also next level if you know what you're doing and you wanna to go to that uh, stage, obviously you're free to do so. And these are the devices that they use. Uh, it's made by General Byte. General Byte is, makes Bitcoin ATMs. I don't know of any other organization in the world that makes Bitcoin ATMs to the level that they do. So the quality, the interface, everything about it is great. Um, and I've used it at Paralini Place over the years and I've seen other examples of their ATM uh, across Europe. And they're very, very easy to use. And that for me is great because I have used other systems built by other organizations in Australia or other locations around the world. And the interface is not as friendly, it's not, as exciting, let's say. Um, so I really like the work General Bytes does. And you can see various uh, Bitcoin ATMs that they offer. So the one before is a point of sale system um, that you would load all your products that you have in your physical store, so coffee, food, etc. And the payment is done uh, using cryptocurrencies. And that's the terminal. Or you can have a Bitcoin ATM. Uh, and the thing about the Bitcoin ATM is that due to the decentralized nature of all of these things, you can actually use this to earn a passive income. So you can purchase one of these and let's say you have a good friend that owns a cafe or you know someone that has a convenience store and they would be open to the idea of you placing one of these ATMs there or a bar or office. And what's interesting is that you can set your own fees so you can load it up with cryptocurrencies and uh, then you allow people to purchase them. So you're essentially uh, creating one of these uh, ATMs and placing it in a, play, uh, in a location where people can come and buy or sell and you set the fees and you can earn an income that way. And what's very uh, important to note is that you have uh, different types of ATMs. So some of them just let you buy cryptocurrencies, uh, so that's a one way, and some of them let you sell. And depending on what you're after, how you want it to work, you can select between those uh, options. And you can see the prices there, you can contact them, you can learn more about it if you want to. And uh, I have watched them develop the various ATMs over the years, and I've always been impressed with what they do. And the BATM4 is their newest one, and I haven't seen that one in person, though it looks great from uh, what I see in the videos and uh, images. And looking forward to seeing that at Paralini Place at the Hackers Congress later this year. So there you have 
various ways on how you can participate within a cryptocurrency economy. So accepting it on your online store, physical store, having a designated point of sale system or an ATM uh, where you can actually earn passive income on top of that as well. Um, so I hope you kind of take that into consideration. Maybe it will inspire you to do something similar. And if you want to learn more about it, reach out. The last thing that I do want to touch up on in terms of payments is that you can also use a hardware wallet. So this is a hardware wallet. A hardware wallet, this one is by Trezor. Um, there's one by Ledger as well. Uh, it means that it's not online. That's the advantage of it. So if you have it on your phone, you accept payments on your phone, that phone could be online. Um, there's a security risk there. When you have a hardware wallet, it comes with you know, it's much stronger security parameters. So it's not online unless you want to send a transaction. And even then there's uh, protocols in place to make sure that you're very secure in doing so. It's not like a phone, which wasn't really designed to accept cryptocurrencies, though you've downloaded the app. And in most cases it is very secure. So when you're accepting it on a larger scale, let's say, you know, you have a great amount of money rather than one or two people coming in every month, you may want to consider a different uh, hardware for uh, your cryptocurrency payments. And Trezor wallets and Ledger wallets essentially are uh, a bank, you know, size of uh, less, than, less than the palm of your hand. So um, that's something else to kind of explore as well if you're open to the idea. So for generally speaking, for people that don't have large volumes of payments coming in, uh, the phone app and the WordPress uh, plugin are quite adequate. Now we come to the part which is, okay, that's great. I've participated, I've accepted payments and uh, I need to pay my bills. You know, I need to pay one of the staff and uh, how do I do that? And that's very, very important because a lot of people get enthusiastic about cryptocurrencies and uh, they want everyone to accept it, right? Though they don't go and show the last step, which is, okay, I've accepted it, but how do I pay my bills now? I'll give you two examples. Uh, one is Bitbill within the Netherlands, uh, though you can use them to pay most people within Europe. And another one is Living Room of Satoshi, and that's for people within Australia. Living Room of Satoshi charges quite high a quite higher fee. In Europe, traditionally, the fees are much lower. Um, and I hope to see that change as the years go by. Uh, so the fees for living room of Satoshi can be up to 5%. Uh, generally speaking with European based platforms, it's about one or 2%, which is you know, quite a significant difference. And uh, yeah, you would put in the person's details and uh, select the cryptocurrency that you want to use to pay that person. And that's it. So they would add a bit of fees on top of what the actual value is and from there you would make your payment. So if you have received it on your phone, uh, you would use your phone to make the payment. If you had used one of the online plugins, uh, you would uh, first transfer it to a wallet on your phone or somewhere else on your desktop, hardware wallet, and then you would go and pay the people that you need to pay. You could probably do it with some of these online plugins uh, directly, though I don't recommend that. Um, because it can cause issues and it's better to just retrieve it all, put onto your phone or a hardware wallet or, or a desktop wallet and then from there make payments as you would like. Um, with Living Room of Satoshi, similar deal. Uh, you can pay your credit card, you can pay to a bank account or you can pay a bill. So these two services um, can exist in various countries. These are the ones that I know about. Uh, I know a few more in Europe though that's just good enough for showing you an example. And yeah, you can use it to pay your rent, you can use it to pay bills. I mean, uh, I've used it for a very long time and uh, I've never really had any issues with them. So there you go. Some examples of how you can participate within a decentralized economy, how simple it is. And uh, if you have any questions, you want to learn more, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us and uh, Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and uh, hopefully see you on the next episode. Cheers.